There he stands. And yes, I know many of you are waiting for my Shadowlands thoughts after BlizzCon. I am back, but I would be remiss not to show you this fight in the upcoming Neil Lothar raid as we have finally seen Nazoth and <laughs> just how large he is. Uh, we got to test two more bosses tonight and uh, I'm going to do them in the reverse order because I think most people really care about Nazoth and tell you about what is... Honestly, this is where I really like what Blizzard does with raid fights. They've taken a fight that ordinarily would be really boring. Honestly, mechanically, this fight would be very dull. But by just doing some simple twists, they've made it absolutely fantastic. And that's all it takes sometimes is a little twist in setting, a little twist in how you deal with things, and it comes out really nice. So we are facing not Nazoth, the final boss. This is Carapace of Nazoth. This is us breaking into the final fight. This is us actually getting into Nazoth as he's trying to heal up and repair himself uh, to prevent us getting in. This is where we're going to see the use of the legendary capes and how they come into action that we're going to be getting in 8.3. This contains all of those things. So I'm going to do this by literally taking you through the fight. We are going to hit Berserk here. We're pretty sure, uh, and some caveats here, pretty sure this boss has way more HP than you're going to see on live. Uh, but that's hard to say with gear scaling and lack of corrupted gear. They did give us a vendor, but nobody's got time for that during testing. And also, um, we're going to be doing things in this video that you're absolutely not going to be able to do on live. So don't take this as a guide or anything, just a general idea of how this fight works. So... You start in this big open area at the base of Nazoth, and you see this enemy, the Fury of Nazoth. And what you've got here is basically three elements that ordinarily, like I said, would be quite dull, but they work really well. Uh, we've got some punctured wounds at the back of the room, four of them, in fact, these little uh, portals. And they can spawn the Gaze of Madness, and these tentacle eyeballs will appear, and they'll start chain casting something. And you don't want to interrupt this. In fact, every time you interrupt this spell, it's going to cause your sanity to drain. So similar to yogg -Saron, we have this sanity mechanic. You can no doubt see the bar in the middle of my screen. And you've probably already noticed that I have an extra action button, which is the legendary cape. So, Rathion is there. And if you use the legendary cape, you will be teleported. You will turn into a little dragon. You will fly to Rathion, and he will refresh your sanity back to full. Taking damage in the fight, getting hit by certain mechanics is going to drain your sanity. You will become mind-controlled once your sanity does expire, and you can't use your cloak if you're already mind-controlled. However, you will gain a significant damage buff of 20% if... Uh, while your sanity expires, you have a buffer before you become mind-controlled where you get this huge damage buff to sort of unleash yourself and then you'll become mind-controlled. Currently on the testing, you could tremor totem the mind control. So you could allow people to get the huge damage buff, let them get MC'd, and then tremor totem and break the, the mind control. Unlikely that that's going to work live. The idea is, of course, towards the end of the fight as we're doing this final push, is that people will become mind-controlled and they kind of give over the last of whatever they've got in order to defeat the boss. Or you're supposed to use your cloak as your sanity sort of drains. So a few things going on here. You're going to kill the gaze, and then you're going to notice these enormous tentacles appear. Now, instead of using some sort of gamey signifier on the floor, we're so used to seeing circles. And in fact, we're going to see a boss that does utilize circles in many, many ways next. Uh, now you just watch the shadow, because these tentacles are so big, they block out the sun. Wonderful idea. Uh, so you're going to see these giant shadows start farming across the battle arena. And this tentacle is going to slam down, and then he's going to spawn sores. Similar to what we saw, actually, with the Madness of Death Deathwing fight, when his claws were on the platform and he had these sores appear. And these hemorrhaging sores are going to cause damage and do all sorts of nasty things. And the tentacle will not disappear until these things are defeated. So you can DPS these from the ground. But the much sens more sensible way and the much more fun way is to climb on them because they're so big. So you can see where the tip of the tentacle will land because of the shadow. And then you can jump onto the tentacles. Sometimes it was a bit finicky. I got the idea. They'll probably alter it to make it a little bit simpler. But the tentacles could be slammed and you could kind of control where they were going to go. And then jump on them. Defeat the swords, jump back down. Going to be a huge amount of adds that do increasing amounts of damage to whoever's tanking them. So you want to melt them down. They can be killed very, very easily. It's so clear, especially after the next boss, I'm going to show you why multi-dotters were massively nerfed coming into 8.3. We suspected they were going to have huge multi-dotting fights, and that is absolutely the case. Now, you're going to rinse and repeat this cycle. Managing your sanity, defeating the gazes of madnesses, 
defeating all the swords and the tentacles, working down the HP of the boss, until ultimately you're going to transition the, uh, the, the Fury of Nazoth into Phase 2. Now, in Phase 2, we're actually going to go inside Nazoth. It's so cool. You're going to go inside. Rathion is going to follow and actually set up sort of a sanity station. So, at this point, you get a full refresh of your sanity. So, it's not a case of you need to maintain your sanity from 100% to 0, like we saw with Yogg-Saron. Now, you will get a really nice sanity regen given to you throughout the fight. So, you're going to pick up your sanity. Then, we're going to go into, essentially, Gahoon's room. We're going to go into Gahoon's room. Similar to Gahoon, we're going to have two sides of the room which are covered in these tumors. These tumors are going to slow and do all kinds of things, although druids could bypass it by sh shapeshifting. Again, unlikely to work on live. And all along the walls are going to be these large cysts. And now, you have to kill all the cysts in the room before you can fight the boss. The boss will keep healing himself and doing all kinds of stuff until this is done. So you want to do it very quickly. We found clearing one side completely by working our way up, dotting down all these tumors that are causing AoE mind control and big blasts of sanity reduction, killing all the, the tumors, and then using the cloak to teleport back to the beginning. This is how you can utilize the cloak in a different way. Again, these small twists that make the fight so much more interesting. So everyone's going to turn into a dragon, fly back to the beginning, then rinse and repeat on the right side. And once that is done, then we can engage the boss so we can all jump back down there we don't need to use the cloak and in fact the cloak has a two minute cooldown so we couldn't use it again anyway now we're going to start working the boss down has a couple of extra mechanics including a frontal optical blast similar to what you've seen on Myth mithrax something like that working him down again managing sanity because we're about to go into phase three which is the final push and we're not going to get a sanity reset going into phase three so you have to utilize this phase in your cloak effectively in order to enter phase three at the right time with all your raid ready and raring to go for the big final push and then we're going to travel even further into nazoth going in there is then going to give us yet another enormous room with a hole in the middle likely where we go to actually fight nazoth as we get into the final burn phase of this once again another burn phase been a very common theme throughout this raid so far but this time, we've got the addition of all the mechanics we've seen so far and giant tentacles that are going to spawn on the side and cut off huge portions of the room. But once again, denoted by the shadows on the floor, allowing you to easily see where you're supposed to stand because it's not in shadow and avoiding this. But now we have a giant raid-wide AoE, which is extremely deadly in order to finish this off. Now, as I said, we didn't kill this one. We did hit the Berserk. Uh, it's likely he does have too much HP. For testing purposes, they don't really want you to kill the boss. They want you to test the mechanics. So they're not into whether or not you can go into the PTR and kill the boss. No one fucking cares. It's all about whether or not the boss works. Does his mechanics work? So they generally do give the bosses way more HP so that they can do all their mechanics without them just being burned to the floor and going, hmm. Uh, like we saw with the previous Anixia style boss where it just didn't do anything and it's it's pointless testing it and we finished testing early because it's a waste of our time. This time they kind of got it right. But what a fight. So much fun. Now, you probably noticed this Im immense amount of visual clutter that's going on the screen again this is likely not to make it to live so they have notifications like a big red eye that flashes over your screen uh one of our players said it was like being flash banged every few seconds because and some of our players did feel a bit sick actually doing this fight so it's definitely going to be removed uh they have notifications for things like if someone interrupted the gaze of madnesses in the first phase because that's like the notification someone interrupted it if it does get the cast off it'll do it as well but if you see it flashing on your screen that's because somebody's actually kicking the enemy and interrupting it causing it to go off much more basically if you see the big red icon that means something's happened that's cost you sanity they then have this giant purple blue effect around the screen which seems to happen if you are like below 70 percent and it also doesn't disappear if you get your sanity back and if your sanity gets lower so it kind of fills our screen so i really wouldn't worry about that although it's no doubt distracting as hell for you guys watching it it's just something that they haven't quite got right because uh, there's no way they're having the screens like this uh for when this fight actually goes live it would cause a lot of sickness to a lot of players i'm sure but an absolutely extraordinary fight. Couldn't be happier. Was generally afraid of something like Spine of Deathwing. Uh, something along those lines, like, happening again. Was really afraid of having that situation occur. But was pleasantly surprised. Liked the use of the Legendary Cloak. And also, it makes way more sense now why the Legendary Cloak does reduce the amount of sanity drained from mechanics. And it uh, sorts that out. Because, obviously, as more and more people get to farm this, it'll make this fight significantly easier. And no doubt will have a similar effect to the Nazoth fight, which also has some 
sanity mechanics involved. So you can easily see how over a few weeks or whatever, or however we upgrade the legendary cloak, this fight will get much, much simpler for pugs and things like that. In the early days, it's going to be way tougher. Really good for the world first race and things like that, as people are going to have to play uh, really well to avoid a lot of this stuff and manage their sanity appropriately, and also find ways around it if they can. Uh, in order to manage this mechanic appropriately. So, super fun. Cannot say anything better about this. Had a blast doing this fight. Even with all the visual noise. And even though the mechanics are basically... You kill adds in phase one. You kill tumors in phase two. And in the last phase, you kill the boss. Like, if I was to really paint this in a incorrect light and just be draw it down to its basics, that's all it is. But the setting and how you do it is what makes it so fun. So, uh, so happy. So, so happy with this fight. Uh, let's look at boss number two, Address to Gath. This was a fight that, again, maybe was overtuned. It was hard for us to tell, honestly. Like, we could have killed this fight, but we basically... These fights are really long, is what you're going to notice. Like, the Berserk time on, on the, the Nazoth fight was, like, 13 minutes. We only have an hour to test these bosses, which means, like, realistically, it's four pulls. Uh, so, we didn't get much time to test these bosses because the fights were so goddamn long. Like, eight and nine minutes. So, it really does look like they've buffed the HP of these bosses. Uh, a relatively simple boss, though. Uh, what we have is similar to Cthulhu in Drastagav, is that we have a series of different tentacles spawning throughout the room... And you have priorities of which ones you, you should destroy. So we have things like Eye Stalks. They're like the weakest ones, similar to Cthulhu. Then we have the Maw Eyes, which are second in priority. And then we have these giant tentacles uh, that have an interesting sort of smoke bomb style mechanic that you can only DPS them if you're in melee range of them. Uh, so you have to run inside. And obviously, once you're in there, you're also obscured from healing and things like that. So you have to be very careful. These things could be tanked by DPS relatively easily because they do this corrupted slam on the floor. But you can move out of it so if you have a dps just taunt it they can shimmy left and right and keep it away from other people while you dps these things down it was causing huge amounts of damage you're supposed to interrupt the eyes and deal with the uh, the mars now the more interesting mechanic of this is that the different tentacles that are alive will duplicate what the boss is doing so you'll have things like glare which is a big laser beam through the raid and if you've left the i believe it's the mars or the eyes they will duplicate that and shoot that in a different direction so you really do need to keep on top of these ads more so so you can only DPS the boss who is constantly healing himself. You can only DPS the boss by picking up what the adds drop. The adds drop various little goo piles on the floor and you have to stand in them and that gives you 30 seconds of boss DPS time. Now the boss, uh, the adds don't drop one for everybody. They drop about six and the giant tentacles drop a bit more, which means that you have to kind of coordinate who's picking up what and when so that they can DPS the boss and managing your DPS effectively, which gives it again a nice interesting twist to this. It's not a case of, oh, we, we can manage the adds, the boss will die. It's more a case of manage the ads while simultaneously planning who's going to go and dps tentacles who's going to be picking up boss dps right now when are we going to manage bloodlust can we get goo on the entire raid for certain periods of time or, or is there a period of time where we're not dealing with ads all these kind of elements come together to make this fight not just a case of just kill ads kill boss uh it's definitely got a lot more to it than that which makes it more interesting the worst thing about this fight that could happen is that on live the it's got way less hp and therefore you're just melting it and kind of like standing around right that would be really boring uh, they did seem to have some timers that were it was either timer based when it spawned more ads they came in waves that got increasingly more difficult so you might start off with say two eyeballs then you would have two eyes and a maw and then by the end of it you've got like three maws which are pretty dangerous one eye and two big tentacles uh, so it gets considerably more dangerous as the fight goes on so that would be the worst part is if these have no hp when it actually comes to live and we're basically just killing ads and then killing the boss like i said that would be the boring feature and that would be fine on farm but for the first kills you definitely want some challenge there and right now this fight does present a lot of challenge so cool bosses once again this is looking to be and i've said it every video a stellar raid absolutely fantastic uh, really good so we have mythic raid testing starting tomorrow uh mythic raid testing i imagine is less relevant to most of you uh so i'll get my shadowlands thoughts out tomorrow and then do the mythic raid testing thoughts on sunday uh, if that makes sense to you guys all right thank you so much for listening looking sharp i'll see you soon Bye bye